He let this throne, you know, he let this throne. God Almighty, his throne. Where he could just easily, you know, with a split second, just full leaders of angels, you know what I'm saying? Like that. But his grace and his mercy and his love for us, man, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it blows my mind. And it's like, you know, we serve a king who, who loves you so much, you know, and then, and he only wants, he wants what's best for you, but he's willing to, to, to come down from his throne, you know, his almighty throne, the creator, the one who sustains the earth in his hand, the one who sustains us right now while we're breathing, literally, you know, came down and, and just laid it down and to say, you know, he's a heavenly king. It's just, you know, I've read the scriptures, I think, I think sees my note, but it's where he did not make, um, I think it's the first, what is it, Philippians? But um, I gotta find it though. Where he, uh, even though he, he, he could have easily, but he chose not to use his, 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 his power, you know, to, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, there you go, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you want to read that passage? Yeah. Awesome. Right, that's right. I'm in mean, right there. Just to give you an insight of why, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you guys turn to Philippians. Uh, Philippians 2 has one more self Okay. There you so go. verse uh, chapter two, verse five and four things. Uh, actually four. I'll let each of you look not only to his own interests but to the interests of others. Here it is. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count in quality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Praise to God. He came as the most littlest way, and I, once one way to look at it is like he, he miraculously he came into a manger, you know, a manger about all places, a manger, a baby, a manger, surrounded by you know animals and you know and a manger like you know, it was probably thirty and just like that, but Almighty God, you know, would just come down that low. To show us, like, you know, he, he's a servant, he was a bond servant, you know, for the Lord and just for God and just and willingly, you know, and for each and every, and every single one of us, you know, like, but I mean, to that, it, it, it tells me, like, like who, who who does that, you know, who, who, who would do that, and, and especially the one who, who created us, you know, what kind of, you know, makes you want to know more about him, you just want to seek him, like, man, if you love me that much, like, you know, I, I, I I definitely want to know more, you know, what he has for me in my life, and I want to serve a king like that. I want, to, you know, but it's a beautiful thing. So you serve a mighty king. Um, also, uh, twelve. You know, he plans also um, to to be able to 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 forgive sins. Um, Luke, Luke, chapter seven, um, forty-eight through uh, forty-nine. Luke, chapter seven. See it. Like that, let's see it. Verse what? Verse uh, seven. I thought it was Luke. I mean, no, Luke. Luke chapter seven. Yeah, verse forty-eight through forty-nine. Yeah. yeah. Forty-eight, forty-nine. See, si, Senor. You want me to read it? It's all yours. <clears throat> and and he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meet with him began to to say within themselves, who is this that forgive sins also? Mm -hmm. And you guys know, um, for him to be to have the authority to, to forgive sins, you know, only God can forgive sins. He's proclaiming that he's equal with God, so he's the only one that can forgive. He, he, that <coughs> he's basically saying that he's God, and that he, he that when he says he told them, you know, if your sins are forgiven. You know, and the Pharisees and they knew automatically because they, they knew what you know what it is that only, only God could forgive sins. And so when they're in the temple and whatever, and then for for him to say that, it was like blasphemy to God. But they didn't they didn't understand that, you know, he was the one he was the Messiah. They didn't see him as a Messiah. They didn't see, they didn't see him as a, the one for the, for the coming savior. You know, they you know, so number thirteen, uh, Jesus claims he was he was the door to salvation. All right. This is John, John chapter ten, verse nine. Think about he said the door, not just many doors. 
You know what I'm saying? There's people that they, there's many doors you can walk into heaven. Mm -hmm. Doors, you know, this door, that door, but these, what do you say? The door. He's the door. There's no other door. He's the only way. He's the door. That's uh, John chapter 10, verse 9. John 10, verse 9. Yeah. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Amen. Oh, man. That's awesome. Number 14. Um, this is claims to be the, the resurrection and life. John 11, chapter 11, verse 25 through 26. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alex, right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to hit that one? Sure. All right. Um, John 11. Yeah. 25, right? Yeah. John 11. Uh, yeah. 25, verse 25 through 26. Yeah. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. Yep. He who believes in me, yep. though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall mm -hmm. Never die. Wow. Be believers. Wow. To believe. To, to believe, you know. He's promising you, you know, to believe in him, but you won't you, you won't taste death. You know, it's because he, he is a resurrection, he is a life. So when he said when he's, he's proclaiming that, who gives life? God. You know? He created us, he gives us life, he can take it back easily. Um and to him to say that so for you just to claim that he's a resurrection of life. From a Jewish perspective, that they, they couldn't really, you know, they couldn't grasp it, you know, from a you know, physical form, but but they didn't know that he was incarnate, he was, you know, God incarnate, you know, and just man, just proclaiming that, you know, he's alive, and just like that made me wonder, like, you know, oh, and it made me think about it too as well, I was like, you know, when I die, I was like, you know, what's gonna happen to me, or just where am I going? Am I just living through emotions and stuff? And you mean you ask that question, you know, one thing you would do, and one thing we all agree is, you know, we're always gonna see death no matter what. People have their own ways of sticking up how they look at that, but are they certain though? Are they 100 percent sure? You know, when you ask some people that, are they 100 percent sure? Do you know where you're going? Some people might might throw at you, you know, religious stuff, but um, do are they 100 percent sure though? You know, that, that they have eternal life. You know, that, that they know that when they go out there today, they get hit by a car, they're gonna be, you know, they're gonna be in heaven. You know, they're gonna not see death. But um, but he promised that for you to, to, to just to, to believe in him, to have faith in him, to believe in him. But and to, and to give us life, you know, and he is the life. So it's like basically saying if we don't have him, you know, there really isn't no, no life in us technically because he's the one who gives us the life. He's the one who, who, who made us and he, and he made us to, he made us for himself, you could say. He made us for himself. Don't you think that we should, you know, kind of like it's like saying live for him, you know, that he made us for himself in all the ways, you know, and he's, and he's, he's saying that, I gave you life, you know, I'm the resurrection, I'm the life, you know, why, you know, we don't have to worry about death anymore, we don't have to worry about anything, else. those things, you know, he, he's telling us to, 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 and his word proclaims it, and it's true. Um, number 15, uh, Jesus claims to be the light of the world, that's John 8, 8, 12. And uh, the word light, you could say, it's, it's, it's in a way, it's a, it's a metaphor of, of truth, you know, the light. Talk about today playing the game, you know. Verse what? Uh, John 8, verse uh, 12. Mm -hmm. Want to read that? <coughs> then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Think about it. When technically, when, when, when God was never, was never around the picture or he was going through your life and stuff and then you technically you're living in darkness you know you're going through darkness and you know things and you're experiencing things and, and when he's saying he's proclaiming that he's the light you know he's the truth he's the truth he's the light the truth and, you're, and we're always trying to find answers right we're trying to find out what, what's true speak you meet me and you ask like you know what, what, what is truth you know I'm like so it's a good question to ask I'm like what's truth and you, you go find other things like what we spoke about because people said but are they like, can they back it up? Is it, is it really like, uh, is, it, is it truth? Is it actually the truth with what it is? And we have to say he's the light of the world and he's the truth, you know. And it's funny because, you know, um, when God said in the Genesis, um, let there be light, I mean, it's, it's, but 
he is the light, you know, so it's like, he's a, he's a creator, you know, so um, he's a true success, so, so he, he gives light, and in times of darkness, you know, he's a way of, like, walking. You walk with him, you know, you give it to, you know, walk through life, you know, through the darkness, and just focus on him, and, you know, he can get you to, to those dark places, because he's a light, and he, he guides you. The, 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 the role might be a little, like, thing, but there's that one light, you know, you can follow that light, and just, and he just go, just go straight home. Uh, number 16. Whoa. Sorry, boys, ladies. Here we go. Jesus claims um, to, to live a sinless life. That's John 8, 46. John 8, 46. truthfully accuse me of sin and since I am telling you the truth mm -hmm. why don't you believe me the truth hurts you know and he's saying he's sinless you know and and the, the purpose of sacrifice and you know had to be you know someone a perfect you know, sinless and he, he's saying he was he was he was, he was sinless so when the truth is in front of you, you know, we said that we, we can like reject it, we reject it. And it's because he's dealing with your sin. He's dealing with, with what you're, you know what I'm saying, what you're going through, all the, all the, either your morality, your this and that, et cetera, et cetera. But Jesus gets right in your face. He gets in your heart. He, he, he gets to you personally. And that's why he got with me a lot. He just, he, 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 he interrupted all my stuff and just made me uncomfortable sometimes. But because that, first of all, he was he's sinless, you know, so he had, he's a, He's just, you know, so he has authority, you know, so he can, he knows me, right? So he can just pick out the things of what's going on. He's like, Chris, this is not this and that. And he's like, I know, this is how you're feeling. And you're like, but I, I stop, but I want to keep doing it this way, though. And then, but he knows you, you know, but he's sinless. He, 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 he lived a sinless life. And as us as sinners, you know, you know, we can never be perfect. He, he's, he's perfect. Um, Number 17, Jesus claimed that, the, that he would die and come back to life. John 10, uh, verse 17 through 18. John 10, 17 through 18. 17, 18. Therefore my Father mm -hmm. loved me, because I laid down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Amen. Amen. You see what I'm saying? He's, who claims these things if he's not God? If, he, if he's and, and in, all, in all history, people claim many things, but have they kind of like you know fulfilled them? It, you know, have they been, it, it mostly shakes apart. It breaks apart. You know, for Jesus, they're finding ways to still try to you know. Make him fail, basically, or make him look different from what, from what, what the Bible says he is. But, you know, I say this, you know, you can do whatever you want to the Word, but the Word lives forever. You know, the Word is on forever. It's God's Word. It's, it's eternal. You, you can't, it, once, you know, it's, you know, I love to say, every, every word will, will, every word in the Bible, his, his Word will be fulfilled to, to the very T. Every dot. And what? Every dot, uh... And every T slashed, I think. It's like dot cross. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is, if he's going to promise us all these things, you know, and he's claiming um, um, to come back, he, 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 you know that he promised all these other things. We know that, that, that he's going he's gonna to come through with it. So when our lives happen and we go through stuff, don't you think that he's going to come through somehow, some way? He's going to come through. So why can't we just believe in that? It might, it might not look always good from the outside, but in him, it's, it's, anything's possible. Anything, you know. So that's what you know. He's just he's claiming. He's claiming. You know, uh, he would die and he would come back to life, and he has the power to do that. 
Um, and then number 18, um, uh, Jesus claimed to be the only way to God. This is good. John 14, 6. John 14, verse 6. Yeah. John 14. Justin, you want to read that, Justin? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is the one of the uh, very famous um, when, he said, what did, yeah. when he said that. People look at it like that, but it's like it's like almost when they look at that, it's like they skip it. <laughs> like they don't even like bother with it. It's like, you know, he's specifically saying you know, he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. That that bothers people, literally, and I, I've been mm -hmm. saying about it to me, and I've been saying it too. But you know, that's just just my, in, general, in general, just in general, you, you don't have to be a, a genius in the word. You just go, you just start sharing your faith with people. Or just, just you know what I'm saying? And you just, you, you just completely just only say, "He's the way, the truth, and the life." You start getting like you know, tomatoes thrown at you. You know, it just, it just because, and and and, and it's not on your authority. It's just you're just saying, "Look, this is what he said. This is what he said." And um, I believe his word. I believe his word is true. So you will see that a lot, you know. And and Jesus, he does divide. He divides, you know what I'm saying? But it's on him. You know, he's in control. We're not the ones. You know, he's in the control. He's the one who knows. And he's he's on mission. He's, he's I think a lot of people's problem is that line right there. Uh, no one comes to the Father except through him. And in a way, somehow, some way, see, people don't understand that um, that. They think that uh, um, when it comes, when it that they think that they can get um, get away from Jesus, you know, like they, like uh, like they don't need him and this and that, but like and that they think that that, that God is really rejecting them, but technically you're rejecting him, you know. And regardless what happens, you're gonna have to deal with him either one one side of the road or the other side. It doesn't matter which side is you know you choose your path. But and he's trying everything he can to tell you, look, I'm the way, you know. Trust in me, on the light, on the truth, you know, and, and it's like, there's no other way to heaven, no, there's no other way, you can try religion, you can try this and that, you can do all these stuff, but I have to say he's the way, the truth, and the life, you know, it's, he's confirming that, look, you can't do it on your own, it's kind of obvious, right, like, you, and it's like, because it, it interrupts people, it, it, it kind of, it disturbs people, when it just, it, it gets to the core of our hearts every single time, when we're alone, when we're doing this, when we're doing that, he cuts right through our, our, our pain and struggle, and he's, and he's like, and you, you're trying to feel it on your own, but he's trying to tell you the whole time, he's trying, trying, trying to pull you in. Somehow, he's showing you, testing you, putting you through trials, you know, maybe you guys are going through confusion, you don't know what's going on in your life, but bank on that, that look, you said he's the way, the truth, and the life. I want to come to that first, before I go to any other, any other, any other source first, that I can, that he is the way, and that Lord, you're the way, you're the way, if you're the truth, you're not gonna lie to me because you're the truth, and in, in the light you're gonna give me life and, more, and life abundantly, and it's not not to hurt me but to bring me to make me stronger, you know, to make me strong. So he's the way. He's the only way to God. The only way. Um, Nineteen. Jesus claimed he would send the Holy Spirit. John sixteen five through seven. Seeds. Light it up. <laughs> yeah. Sixteen. What verses? Sorry. Uh, five, five John 16, yeah, five, verses 5 through 7. Yeah. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. Uh, excuse me. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. That's the third part of the Trinity. Um, the Holy Spirit is the Helper. Um, so if he never left to give us the Holy Spirit, you know, because some people say, I remember I heard this too, um, which one would you rather, rather have? Would you rather have Jesus in front of you? Or would you rather have his spirit? And it's a, it's, a good, it's a good question. Like if you could, you had a wish and you say, look, if I can talk to Jesus, 
you know, right here, boom, boom, ask him all the questions in the world, or would I rather have the Holy Spirit with me? Which one would you choose? No. I'd rather have a person. Okay, that's, that's understandable. That's understandable. But um, if you never send the Holy Spirit, you know, then he wasn't able to live, to live in us, you know, and then live through us. And, you know, um, basically it's like saying, he'll be in you where you, it can never be separated. Physically, you can be separated, mm. physically. You feel me? So he promises he's gonna be with you with every single thing. So it's like, he's living in you, he, he, he gives you his spirit, so wherever you go, he's with you. Doesn't matter what happens. So, I mean, it's a beautiful promise, and you know, we live in that promise. Um, number 20, Jesus claimed to be God. This is the most important part right now. John 8, John chapter 8, 58 through 59. Alex, you want to read that one? Yeah. John, John chapter 8, verse, verses 58 through 59. Okay. You got it, man. Jesus said to them, most assertively, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. I then, am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out in the temple, going through the midst of him, and so passed by. Nice. You do know why the Jewish people, you know, or the religious people, the Jewish people at the time, why they want to pick up stones, though, right? That right there, he's proclaiming, he's, he's, that, that's blaspheming God. It's to say the word I am, and I'm going to take, take you back through some, the Old Testament where it says it, what, he, what he's referring to when he's saying that. So let's go to Exodus 3, verse 14. That's the Old Testament. Which the Jewish people would always study and read and they would memorize. Exodus what, 3? Yeah, Exodus 3, verse 14. 314. Can you read it? Yeah. It's 314. Yeah. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Wow, right? That's a good thing. That same for that same I am and you know that, that who, who, who spoke Moses into us. Jesus is proclaiming, that's the same, that's who I am. That God, in, you know, in God Almighty, that, that, that was me. And when we look back, when he was saying that our scriptures would testify of him, again, he's just reaffirming everything over and over again, that he's God Almighty, that he's God. And then also, now, we're almost, we're almost done here. Uh, 21, uh, his supreme knowledge, uh, John 7, 15 through 16. John 7, 15 through 16. John 7, 15 through 16. Right, John 7. 15 through 16. 16. You want to read that one? And the Jews marvel, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Wow. And another one, look at, uh, also look at uh, John 12, 49 through 50. John, yeah, John 12, John 12. Yeah, you're going to put it John. John 12. You got it? You got it? First what? 49 of 50. Yeah, 49 of 50. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, bro. For well, I have not spoken mm -hmm. on my own oh, authority, but what the Father oh, who sent me gave me a command mm -hmm. what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, Whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Bang. <laughs> bang. Mm -hmm. you know, bang. And it's, yeah, man, I mean, when you look at his word, you, know, it, you can't deny it. You know? And people were like, well, 
how can you prove and this and that? I mean, he can go you know, go on for many days, but his word, um, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus proclaiming there all these things and and fulfilling every single piece of them. You know, that's why it comes to the conclusion. You know, and I'll, I'll get to that soon. But um, number here's number uh, twenty-two. Uh, his test of truth. It's, 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 uh, John seventeen. I'm sorry, John chapter seven. This is a couple, John seven. Uh, yeah, John seven. Just a couple chapters before that. Yeah, verse seventeen. Look, 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 look. John seven seventeen. John seven. Yeah, John seven. Yeah, chapter verse seventeen. Yeah. You got it. Test everything, you know. Test you, whatever, whatever I'm saying. That's why, you know, I, I, it's not me. You know, I, I, it's only what the word says. And test it, you know. Even like test, test, like test God's, you know, His word. Like test it out. Like you know, like what, what do you got to lose? I mean, I see you got more to gain. You know what I mean? You got nothing, nothing to lose, more to gain. But uh, but test it. Like we, we test out a lot of things. We test this, we test that. That fails. But why don't we just? Actually, for the first time, let's let's test his word and see if it's true what he's saying. Let's look it up. You know, let's let's put it to the test. And man, when you when you really when you you really you know concerning you know I mean, he's gonna put you to do some things, and he's gonna make you realize, wow, like like his word does not lie. It's true what he says. But man, it, um, just test it. I always say to test everything. Test everything what, what people say. But mostly, just test him, and you know he. He will, he will surprise you. And uh, number 23, um, his, his, uh, his selflessness. That's in verse 18. That's actually the next verse, actually, right there. You gotta read that. John 7, verse 18. He who speaks mm -hmm. from himself seeks his own glory, but yeah. he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is mm -hmm. is true, mm -hmm. and no unrighteousness is in him. <laughs> we, oh man, when you seek his, you know, seek the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Is in him. Yeah, that's what so it's like when you seek Jesus, you know, when you seek him, you seek him out who he is. You're gonna run into the Father, you know, if you're seeking truth, you know, and you're gonna run into you're gonna, Jesus. Is gonna come in you, but to 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 know Jesus, it's like when you follow Jesus, like you know, He's in you. Then you know, it's like He's true. So you're gonna follow what the what what the Father does, you know, His will. You know what I'm saying? But like you're not. It's like it's all about Him. The glory to bring Him glory. Is not to bring ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And he came to bring him glory, and because he was with him, but it's like all upon the whole time was his will, his will, his will, God's will, the Father and the will, the will of the Father. So our, what's our goal is to, to, to do the will of God. What's the will of God? You know, how, how can we find out? You know, what's our purpose? You know, you know, what's God's will for our lives individually? You know, where where does He want to lead us? We go to the source. We come to Christ. We, we 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 come to His Word. We seek His will, you know, for our lives. And and by doing that, you know, it's true. When you seek His will, it's true. And for Him, and you and let just let it be His will. It's okay. And there, it, it, things will, will, will okay because it's His will. But if you're seeking, it in, make sure you're seeking it in truth and in, in, in the Spirit as well. Um, Twenty-four. We're almost wrapping it up. Uh, number four. Um, his impact. Uh, John 7, uh, 19 through, through 20. Actually, the next verse, yeah, coming down. Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keeps the law? Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered and said, You have a demon who is seeking to kill you? 
Is that the one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see the way people reacted. I'm gonna give you the law, get out of your case. Why do you seek to kill me? People, people answered and said, You have a demon who is seeking to kill you. It's, Jesus is gonna impact people from all sides. You're gonna, you're gonna put people off or you're gonna give people to feel good. Right there, so to them, he's pissing them off. Because you feel like like um that he's that he is saying that he's a blasphemer, that he's you know what I'm saying he's all this stuff, he's facing for family, all these things and this and that. But to, and to be more specific, you know, it, they're under the rule of you could say of Satan, or they're under the rule of just being blinded by darkness with their pride and they don't see their sins, they don't see their their earning of their desire to just, you know. For God or uh, to for a savior or for you know what I'm saying like like if they feel like by doing their own stuff they can they can be they're just saved by just following the Torah which is the Old Testament just following the rules and stuff like that they keep this they keep this and and he says it right there you know saying um did not Moses give you the law yet not, not, none of you keeps the law why do you seek to kill me and he's literally just he's fulfilling the law you know what I'm saying and, and if they, if they don't see Moses you know what I'm saying. Then they're definitely not gonna see him, or it doesn't matter what happens. And that's why I see a lot of people too. Like you can do as many things, and you can do miracles, you can do, you know, but they just, they just still won't believe. They just they just won't. And number twenty five, um, um, his works. You could say or his miracles, but his works. And the last one, John seven twenty one through twenty four. <clears throat> Jesus answered and said, anybody? Last one. That was. Yeah. Jesus answered and said to them, I did one work and you and you all and you all marveled. Most therefore gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcised a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Mm. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Mm. Amen. Amen. It's, it's awesome how you see they were consuming with the law, not concerned about what he did. Mm -hmm. So right. legalistic. Right, right. And I think he's, he's, he's the way he said the, the, the one work he's referring to the one, the, the one who, I think it was, he was sick or something, and uh, uh, he healed them on the, on the Sabbath, it was. I can't remember the, the paralytic. The, this is pretty much the last miracle we did before. Yeah. Um, this and also this one can say. The whole point is um, 